Hello students. Today's our topic is sources of microorganisms in air. As we all know, aeromicrobiology is the study of intramural or indoor and extramural or outdoor microorganisms in air. In other words, aeromicrobiology deals with the distribution, transmission, and existence of microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, viruses, yeast, and protozoans. AI is not a natural environment for microorganisms because the physical and chemical parameters prevailing in AI does not support the growth and reproduction of microorganisms. Microorganisms in AI are exposed to various environmental conditions like sunlight, UV radiation, desiccation, plus nutrients, etc., which will affect the existence of microorganisms adversely. Hence, the amount of microorganisms in air is less compared to other habitats like soil and water. Distribution of microorganisms in air. The microorganisms are distributed vertically as well as horizontally in the air. Vertical distribution of microorganisms in the air is controlled by air currents, wind flow, etc., whereas their horizontal distribution is affected by various physical and chemical factors. The distribution of microorganisms considerably reduces as the altitude increases. At higher altitudes, the microorganisms are exposed to decrease in temperature, less oxygen content, low atmospheric pressure, low water availability, less organic carbon, etc., which will limit their distribution. These conditions limit the distribution of microorganisms above the troposphere layer of Earth. Only very few number of organisms are seen in the lower layers of stratosphere. That's only the resistant spores are found above the troposphere layer, but only in very low concentrations. As we already mentioned, air is not a natural environment for microorganisms. Microorganisms present in the air are liberated from various other sources. These various sources include soil, water, plant and animal surfaces, and human beings. Once liberated into the air from various sources, microorganisms remain suspended in the air for shorter or longer periods. The suspension of microorganisms in air is dependent on various factors. The first factor is the speed of air currents. In still air, microbes settle easily, whereas a gentle air current can keep the microbes suspended indefinitely in air. The second factor is the size of particles to which the microorganisms are attached. Organisms attached to dust particles or droplets settle out faster than free organisms which are only slightly heavier than the air. The next factor is the humidity of atmosphere. A humid atmosphere contains less amount of organisms than a dry one as organisms are carried down by the droplets of moisture. This explains why the microbial load is more in summer than in winter season. So the four different sources of microorganisms in air include soil, water, plant and animal surfaces and human beings. Coming to the first source that is soil. Soil is considered 
as the most common source of microorganisms in air. From soil, microorganisms are liberated to air by various environmental activities as well as by human activities. Environmental activities like wind blow, air currents, etc. liberate microorganisms into air. And these organisms will remain in the air suspended for longer periods. Human activities like digging, plowing, etc. will also liberate microorganisms from soil to air. An active soil environment liberates more microorganisms to air than a less active soil. Also, air above rich, fertile, and cultivated soil shows a higher viable count than sandy and uncultivated soil. Similarly, soil covered with vegetation liberates less amount of microorganisms into air than bare surfaces as these surfaces can be easily acted upon by wind and air currents. Coming to the next source that is water. Microorganisms are also liberated to air from water. Microbes are liberated from water into air as droplets or as aerosols. Here also, environmental activities like splashing of water by wind and tidal action, as well as human activities like swimming, water sports, etc., will liberate microorganisms from water into air. Coming to the third source, that is the plant and animal surfaces. The plant and animal surfaces contain microorganisms which can be commensals or pathogens. 70% of the plant diseases are transmitted through air because majority of the plant diseases are caused by fungi. And we know that both the sexual and the asexual spores of the fungi can be easily disseminated through air. Plant pathogens can spread over long distances through the air. Example is spores of Paxinia graminis. Animal diseases are less frequently transmitted through air because fungal infections are less in animals compared to the plants. Coming to the last but the most important source of microorganisms in air, human beings. Human beings are considered as the main source of microorganisms in air. Surface flora of the human body is shed at intervals. In addition to that, human beings also produce bioaerosols which may contain common cells as well as pathogenic microflora of mouth and upper respiratory tract. The activities like coughing, sneezing, talking, laughing, singing, etc. will liberate bioaerosols into air. The particles that are suspended in air are known as aerosols. Bioaerosols contain biological contaminants like pathogenic bacteria, virus, microbial toxins, etc. which on ingestion or inhalation can cause infectious diseases in human beings. Bioaerosols vary considerably in their size and composition. Their size usually ranges between 0 0.2 to 100 million. Based on the size, bioaerosols are divided into droplets, droplet nuclei and infectious tests. Droplets are the largest among the three. Composition of bioaerosols depends on the type of microorganisms or toxins they are attached with and also the type of particles they are attached to like mucus, dust, etc. So coming to the first type of bioaerosol that is droplets. Droplets are 
formed by human activities like coughing, sneezing, talking, laughing, etc. and also during disease diagnoses like suctioning and bronchoscopy. Droplets consist of saliva or mucus, epithelial cells, cells of the immune system and various microorganisms. Hundreds of microorganisms can be seen in such droplets and these organisms can be pathogenic if discharged from infected persons. Usually, pathogens of the respiratory tract are liberated as droplets. The size of the droplet determines its period of suspension in air. Droplets are usually having a larger size greater than 10 mm or more and hence they will settle rapidly in still air and true aerosolization does not occur here. They can travel only less than 1 meter through the air and are immediately deposited on the nasal or oral mucosa of the new host or in their immediate environment. If they are inhaled, they are usually trapped on the moist surfaces of the respiratory tract and will be expelled out by the different procedures like coughing, sneezing, etc. or they may cause the upper respiratory tract infections. They cannot move to the lower respiratory tract because of their size and hence they cannot cause lower respiratory tract infections. Coming to the second type of bioaerosol that is droplet nuclei. Droplet nuclei are actually originating from the droplets itself by the evaporation of large droplets. Droplets in warm and dry atmosphere evaporate rapidly and become droplet nuclei. The solid material left after drying up of the droplet is called droplet nuclei. They are less than 5 mm in size, usually ranging between 1 to 4 mm, and contain microorganisms, dust particles, skin cells, and other debris. Here, unlike droplet, true aerosolization is taking place and droplet nuclei will remain suspended in the air for longer periods of time. Droplet nuclei are widely dispersed by air currents and remain for hours or days and are inhaled by susceptible hosts. Once inhaled, they can escape the mechanical traps of upper respiratory tract because of their small size and can enter the lungs. Hence, they are more potential agents of infection than droplets and they play a very important role in airborne transmission of diseases, particularly respiratory infections. The role of droplet nuclei in airborne transmission of diseases was first studied by Wells in 1955. To cause an infection, microorganisms that are present or left behind by the droplet nuclear formation should remain viable. So the viability of the organism in the droplet nuclei is determined by atmospheric conditions like humidity, sunlight, temperature and also by the size of particles bearing the organism and also by the degree of susceptibility or resistance of microbial species to the new physical environment. Usually, resistant forms can remain viable for longer periods. Coming to the last type of bioaerosol that is infectious dust. 
infectious dust is also produced from the large droplets large droplets settle out rapidly from air onto various surfaces including clothes floor wall table tops and other exposed surfaces and it will get dried these droplets may include nasal and throat discharges of patients containing infectious pathogens disturbance of these dried materials during bed making sweeping of the floor handling of contaminated handkerchief etc will liberate infectious dust into the air this infectious dust will remain suspended in air for longer periods of time and are considered as a serious hazard in hospital areas also laboratory practices like opening of frozen bacterial cultures or the cotton plex right after being wetted by the culture broth will liberate infectious dust in laboratories so to summarize as we already said air is not a natural environment for microorganisms microorganisms present in the air are liberated from various other sources these sources include soil water plant and animal surfaces and human beings soil is considered as the most common source of microorganisms whereas humans are considered as the most important source of microorganisms air from human beings the microorganisms are mainly liberated from the surface of the body and also from the upper respiratory tract as aerosols the aerosols that are containing suspended microorganisms are termed as bioaerosols based on the size bioaerosols can be divided into droplets droplet nuclei and infectious dust among the three droplets are the largest one and they cause the upper respiratory tract infection when these droplets are liberated into the dry and warm environment the liquid portion evaporates and the solid particle along with the microorganism what is left behind is called the droplet nuclei droplet nuclei are more infectious agents and they cause lower respiratory tract infections infectious dust is also produced from the large droplets large droplets will settle out on various surfaces and a disturbance of these dried substances will be liberating the infectious dust infectious dust can also cause lower respiratory tract infections and they are considered as a serious hazard in hospitals that's all for today thank you for your patient listening for more updates in microbiology topics please do subscribe this channel Thank you once again.